Today we remember Joan of Arc mostly from novels and bad movies. We boil her down to this. Joan of Arc was a rare female military leader, she talked to God, she was burned at the stake, and she looked good in shiny armor. But there's a lot more to Joan of Arc than what you remember from your middle school history textbooks. That's not even her name. We call her Joan of Arc today, but that's not what she called herself. For starters, she was French, and Joan isn't a French name. Her given name was actually Joan, and she called herself Joan la Pucelle, or Joan the Maid. So the English translation of Joan is Joan, which is why we English speakers don't refer to her as Joan. So that makes sense, but what about Arc? Did Joan come from a town called Arc? Nope. According to the St. Joan Center, her father used that name. He was from a place called Arcan Boa, hence the surname De Arc. And since modern people have a really hard time fathoming daughters who don't inherit their father's last names, we use Arc as Joan's last name too, even if she never did, having been born in a village called Doremi. Turns out Joan of Doremi just doesn't have that certain je ne sais quoi. Divine visions or schizophrenia? In Joan's day, hearing voices meant you were either talking to God or to the devil. And either way, it wasn't really great news for you. If you talked to the devil, you were a witch, which meant you'd get burned at the stake. If you talked to God, you were a very important person, which meant that eventually someone would decide you were actually talking to the devil, which meant you'd get burned at the stake. See how that works? Joan grew up devout, so when she started to hear voices, she truly believed she was talking to God, who'd chosen her for a great and noble purpose. But God may not have been behind those voices. According to Live Science, at least two modern neurologists have posthumously diagnosed Joan with idiopathic partial epilepsy with auditory features, a genetic form of epilepsy that affects only one part of the brain and can cause auditory hallucinations. Other historians have speculated that Joan suffered from schizophrenia, which would also explain what she assumed was the voice of God. Her family wasn't poor. Joan of Arc is often portrayed as the definitive underdog, a peasant girl who became a great military leader and champion for France. That might make a great morale-boosting story to tell around the fire, but it's not quite the whole truth. According to author Ronald Gower, there's evidence that Joan's family was not actually poor. After her death, neighbors testified that her family owned land, specifically 20 acres, including farmland, meadow, and forest. They also had money stashed away for emergencies, which is a lot more than many modern families have. In fact, Joan's family doesn't appear to have been suffering at all. Their annual income was said to be the equivalent of roughly 200 pounds, which was kind of a lot of money in those days, or at least enough to live comfortably. More a figurehead than a soldier. We love to imagine Joan of Arc riding into battle at the head of her army, taking down English soldiers with one arm and praising God with the other. That's probably not exactly how it happened, though, depending on who you ask. Some of the people who knew Joan of Arc claimed she did all that, charged the British with a lance, and fought alongside her men. But not everyone thinks those accounts are accurate. Historian Desmond Seward, who wrote The Hundred Years' War, The English in France, said, Joan of Arc merely checked the English advance by reviving Dauphinist morale. Similarly, French historian Edouard Perroy basically said she was just a figurehead. She was content to exhort the combatants, say what advice her voices gave, step into the breach at critical moments, and rally the infantry. Which makes sense when you remember… she was basically a kid. Joan of Arc was a heroine, a leader, and an inspirational figure, so it's easy to forget that she was just a child when she accomplished all that she did. According to National Geographic, at the age of 16, she made the journey to Chinon to tell Charles of Valois, the son of the deceased King Charles VI, that God wanted her to help liberate France from its enemies. Unsurprisingly, people needed some convincing. Joan was sent away before meeting Charles, but she returned the following year, still hoping she could reach Charles and make him listen. He did listen, and then he gave her a suit of armor, a sword, and a horse, and sent her off to the front lines. The rest, as they say, is history, literally. Her clothing got her killed. When Joan of Arc was captured in 1430, the English charged her with a bunch of seriously lame crimes that we would never dream of charging anyone with today, including witchcraft, heresy, and cross-dressing. Then came a long trial that would have been humiliating except for the part where Joan was so well-spoken and clever that her inquisitors decided to make her public trial a private one because she was making them all look stupid. After that, Joan was forced to sign a document denying that her visions were real and agreeing not to wear men's clothing anymore. Because remember, that last bit was super important. According to 
mental floss, once her life imprisonment sentence was handed down, she went back to wearing men's clothing again. She told interrogators that she did so to better protect herself from harassment from the guards. She also told interrogators she wasn't being totally honest when she said she didn't really hear voices. And though that certainly contributed to her ultimate fate, it seems the cross-dressing was what set everyone off again. So then the bishop in charge decided she was a relapsed heretic, and she was sentenced to death by burning at the stake.